Okay. So, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't want to like this tool, but turns out it's pretty damn awesome. All right, this is a video for Max Level EDC. I actually found, I love this name. It's kind of a cool name. It is kind of what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to not compromise on items that I carry every day. And when I bought this, I actually bought it because I wanted to use this uh, hex bit exchanger, but <laughs> this tool was much better designed than I expected. I took it apart, put it back together, and yeah, they really, really went all out on building a pretty, pretty badass tool. So let me just walk you through the good, the bad, and the ugly, that kind of thing. So first things first, it's surprisingly light for what it is. The finish is actually really impressive. I'm actually, um, I was very impressed. It didn't look chintzy. It's really, really, really solid. It is incredibly comfortable to use. That really surprised me. And uh, especially with all these little metal pieces that I thought would stick out. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And so let's start with what's easiest to access. Let's start with the blade. So the first thing is the straight edge blade. I love the shape. Um, it's actually a reasonable thickness. It does taper down to a narrow thickness at the top. I'm not super thrilled about that, but I'm um, pretty good. The next thing is the locking mechanism. You'll notice when I pull it, my fingers never cross the path of the blade. That does, is a nice safety feature that it has. And, and they're very easy to grip, which is great. The G10 handles are excellent. Now, if I'm left-handed, the cool thing is I actually have access to a blade, and not just any blade. This is a very cool serrated blade. It might be my favorite serrated blade I've ever touched on a multi-tool because of this little hook. And I actually like the, the fact that these serrations are not very deep, so that makes them much more usable in my mind. This is an excellent, excellent um, serrated blade. All right, now the next thing we're gonna look at is this very unusual three-in-one. I did check this will open cans, even though it may not look like it, it'll actually open. But what's strange is it's actually left-hand oriented kind of strange, right? Uh, but if you're left-hander, you might really like this tool. Um, and then, of course, we have the other thing that's quite easy to ask yes, one-handed, and that is the hex bit driver. I'm um, also, one thing I really like about this, there is very little play in the socket for where the bit is. That is nice. Um, there's also very little play in the locking mechanism movement left, right, up, or down which also is quite nice. Mine did come a little loose. I did notice that some of these would come out a little bit, especially this bit driver. Now, you notice when you open it, the spring is sort of resisting it, so that's going to keep it in somewhat. But if I were to try to flick it, like I just did, to open it, I may just accidentally deploy everything, including the blades. Uh, that's a little, So that this is definitely a two-hand operating kind of tool as far as the pliers are concerned. All right, so let's finish up this side. The next thing I want to talk about, which is really cool, is this chisel scraper. This is really cool. First of all, it's super thick. And I, I, I'm not sure, I wish it was kind of a more of a per perpendicular angle, but this, this definitely seems like it would be incredibly useful. If I was like, trying to remove a bunch of gunk or something. I didn't want to use my blade for it. This, this is just a really excellent tool. This is the maintenance version, of course, and um, I can definitely see using that in car, automotive, that kind of thing. And then let's go to the other side. So now we've talked about all but two tools here. The last two being this flathead screwdriver, which has a ruler on one side. It's kind of hard to see. Hopefully you can see that. And the other side's got a cross-cut file. Thank God it's not a straight-cut file. It is actually a very usable file uh, for what it is, which is basically a fingernail file. Um, <laughs> I can't see any using any of this for anything else. It's just not very usable, um, just in the size and dimension and that kind of thing. And the fact that it bends enough that it's going to be hard to get enough force for the straight cut, the cross-cut to actually hold. Now, the hook is interesting. This is for 
they say it's for um, pulling cotter pins, which I can definitely see that being useful. But the other thing I thought might be quite of use is when you wanna grab some wires that are tucked into a box, you can actually reach around and pull them out this way. And I thought that might be another good way to use that. Um, not necessarily my thing, but I can see somebody wanting to use it. Now, not bad. When I pulled this apart, I was pretty impressed with the durability of the pivots. These are significantly thicker with smaller screws, but the way they have it set is the screws are really just to keep it from sliding out. They don't do much as far as um, taking any of the weight of these. They really, That's all they're really doing is holding on these scales. The, the pieces of metal that are here, the, there's a square side to one part of the pivot here, and then it goes straight all the way through to this other piece of metal on the other side. Um, what's interesting is that means you can unscrew, these are two separate screws and a pivot in the middle, and you can actually remove them separately with a single tool. You don't need two of them, which I thought was kind of nice and very convenient. This, in, for anyone's uh, interested, this is a T9. T9, and this is actually a T8, which was interesting. They're not the same, or at least I don't think they are. It's possible that these are T9 as well, but I got them open with the T8, and I needed two of them to do so. Um, now, that's the good stuff. Um, these, not, you know, maybe you like them, maybe you don't. But let's talk about the most controversial part of this, and probably why I may end up using this for mod fodder and not as a daily driver. This plier head, I like it and I don't like it. Here's what I do like. It's one of the best pair of needle nose pliers specifically that I've ever seen on a multi-tool. Um, it is spring-loaded, it is forged instead of cast, which is a big deal. It comes to a great point. Mine, I have heard people have had bad versions, but my particular one comes very nicely um, shaped. The Diagonal cutters come to a perfect flat um, merge in the middle. When I close it, everything is lined up perfectly. Uh, I have heard that with some use, if any they're using it for any kind of torquing, it can damage these pliers. And that's not one time, that's a couple of times I've heard that. So that might be a product of the design, not the quality. The quality of this tool is far and above any Gerber tool I've ever touched. I mean, I one of the big reasons I am a Leatherman fan is I don't really trust the fit and finish of Gerber, even though I love how they push the boundaries. This is an exception to the rule. This tool has a surprisingly good fit and finish for at least the one I have. Um, definitely, I would recommend it. If you have never had touched a multi-tool and you're considering one, you might want to consider one now I got this for $60 on eBay, brand new, brand new. I think this, MR, uh, I've, I've seen it on Amazon for 120. So this was 50% off, basically. And I saw them, there's a couple of them that are about this price right now. Um, at that price point, yeah, this is, this is a damn good deal, especially with a hex bit driver. Um, so definitely worth considering. Um, all outside accessing tools with the exception of the pliers. That's another thing that's kind of unusual for Gerber. Um, they, this is definitely something you might want to consider. But for me, the real reason I got it is I had a hunch that the, the amount of metal that existed at these pivots was enough that I could modify them to fit in my, cur in my current like monstrosity of a creation, which is the Surge Super Tool Hybrid. Um, this should allow me, theoretically, to run a full hex bit driver on the far end on this side and still give me plenty of room to utilize inside the frame. And that has a huge advantage for me. So I'm trying to push the boundaries of making the truly over-engineered over multi-tool that isn't limited by brand or by component and I want to just make something that is about as universal as I can and basically the search is pretty much the best frame I have found it has the best scissor on any multi-tool 
it has one of the best T-shank um, exchangers, but because I got the Super Tool 300, I also got access to a T-shank exchanger that goes internally. So I'm hoping to be able to utilize that in this model um, and kind of cheat a little bit, get both the saw and the file and shape the file so that it fits inside this T-shank exchanger. So I can get a full hex bit a driver from here. I can get the T-shank exchanger. I can get the saw. I can get the scissors. I can get the one-handed blade from the surge. I mean, yeah, I'm pushing the boundaries here. We're talking about a lot of money invested, but I do think it's possible. So that's sort of where I'm going with this. As much as I love it, for me, it's going to be probably um, mod fodder. But can I, I would highly recommend this to anybody who's starting out and would consider a tool. If you're going to use this for what it is, which is a needle nose plier, not something like a wrench you're trying to actually just crank super hard on something, then this is going to be excellent for you. If you are a fisherman, this is definitely something I would consider because of how long this is. If you can see, it's almost as long as the Surge Super Tool 300 um, pair of pliers, but it is significantly narrower, so it's going to be easier to get into a fish, pull out a, pull out a hook. Um, it's going to get into small spaces easier if you're into electronics, etc., etc. So Definitely something to look into. Um, Gerber did not make a lemon here. Um, the only thing I can see that is really a big issue might be what you want to use it for. This plier head may not work for you, you and what you want to use it for. Um, I also found that the lack of a saw on here was kind of a big deal. I didn't see. I don't see a good place to fit it. I mean, I think you could theoretically put this T-shank exchanger in here. You wouldn't be able to carry the saw. Uh, well, it's equipped in there, but you could still carry the saw um, separately. That is something you could do. Uh, the file is is a joke. Let's be honest. It is it is a good cross cut file. I'll give you that, and it's got a great bite mm -hmm. to it. But it's still um, let's be honest. I mean, I've been so spoiled by the diamond file that's found on the surge the wave, etc. It's just really hard not to have a diamond file on a multi-tool now. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, honestly, this is beautiful. It is really, really a nice tool. The one-handed operation is excellent. I can access, I have a pry bar, something I don't find in a lot of tools. I have a scraper, definitely not something I find in pretty much any tool except maybe, I don't know, the Victorinox Spirit and Victorinox Swiss tool maybe. But generally speaking, this is a really awesome tool. Really, really awesome tool. I highly recommend it. So take a look at it. If you can find it for as cheap as I did, definitely consider it. It also comes with this really excellent sheath that has a lot of space. Let me just give you an idea. This thing weighs, this is a significantly bigger multi-tool. You can see the difference. It can not only hold the surge, which is basically the same size. But it can also hold what I carry, which is all the T-shank saw bits, saw uh, pieces, it can, and it can hold both of these, and, heck, it can hold more than that. Um, probably, let's just jam this thing in there. There we go. Yeah, I'll go in. I mean, it's not perfect, but because it's got the mole attachment and so on, yeah, this thing will carry a ton. Carry a ton. And I don't usually carry it on a belt, but this could go great in a bag. Or on a bag. And it keeps everything nice and organized. Definitely a nice, nice sheath. Uh, one of the best ones I've seen, in fact. So, really, consider it. It comes with bits. It comes with this great sheath. It's black oxide, so it looks really sh schnazzy. Now, I, I don't know why they didn't put that same coating on the plier head, but whatever. Still, looks awesome. Great one-handed opening blade. The other thing that I just realized I hadn't talked about, it doesn't have a pocket clip. It does, however, have a locking lanyard clip, and it does lock. And it's actually positioned straight on top of the weight, which is makes it quite nice. But 
I prefer Pocket Clip, especially since it's a reasonable weight. Uh, eight and a quarter ounces, I think, is what I measured it at. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. It is thick, but definitely pocketable. Something to consider. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed it. This is uh, Max Level EDC, and we'll talk again soon.